So this summer, I got the opportunity to go to the electric e-bike headquarters. They invited me out to Arizona to test out a few of their brand new e-bikes coming out later this year. And one that I can show you guys right off the bat is the brand new electric Expedition 2.0. This is an awesome cargo bike and it's the second edition of their Expedition cargo bike line. And I've got to say, this bike is pretty impressive. But what's also impressive is their headquarters. This is a brand that was started in the United States by two young entrepreneurs. And let me tell you, they have become one of the top, if not the top selling e-bike brand in the United States. And a lot of that has to do with the price point and the quality that they put into their bikes. They were one of the first ones to sell a class three e-bike under $900. Now the Expedition costs quite a bit more, but it's still a bargain whenever it comes to e-bikes. Let's head out on an adventure and take these bikes out for a spin. I've got a few tests that I wanna try out on these bikes to see how they actually work in comparison to the cargo bikes that I currently ride. The main test that I have for this is, does it have speed wobble at all? Whether that's below 20 miles an hour or above 20 miles an hour. And then also, Will it get over 25 miles an hour? That's a big test. I currently ride the Aventon Abound and I love that cargo bike, but there are some inherent problems that I'm hoping that Aventon addresses. And honestly, I'm really hoping that this Expedition has already solved. Number one is the speed wobble. If there's any speed wobble on this bike, I'm gonna be pretty disappointed. And also getting over 25 miles an hour is a pretty important thing. These days, if you're gonna promote a class three e-bike, it better get upwards of 25 to 28 miles an hour. The first test was definitely gonna be the speed wobble test. And I tested this right out of the gate and took my hands off the handlebars and sure enough, there's zero speed wobble. I tested this throughout the day, got it over 25 miles an hour, which was another test, and I was able to take my hands off the handlebars. So it met both of my criteria of being able to go fast and not have any speed wobble. And talking with the engineers about this, they said that they actually met and exceeded a German standard for cargo bikes. I don't know exactly what that standard is and what the qualifications are, but seeing the quality and feel of this e-bike and how it had zero speed wobble at high speeds, I definitely believe they exceeded some standard. And if it's that German one, you know what? I am on board for it. Having a fully stable cargo bike where you're gonna have either groceries on the back or you're gonna have even more important cargo, your kids, is very, very important. This does have a thumb throttle and it's really responsive. It'll get you upwards of 20 miles an hour. It's got a nice, smooth acceleration. But one of the bigger things on this bike is the owner of electric bikes has always been really big into having cadence sensors. He does not like torque sensors. And I can understand that because I've ridden brands where the torque sensors just aren't responsive enough for the type of bike that you're riding. Well, they went with a torque sensor this year and they did a lot of R&D on this torque sensor to make sure that it met the standard of the CEO of this company. And if I'm honest with you, this torque sensor feels more like a cadence sensor, but it does have small aspects of it that make it feel like a torque sensor. And if I'm gonna be riding a cargo bike or a rear hub motorbike, I actually do prefer to have that combination where it feels like a torque sensor, but it has the convenience of a cadence sensor. And I think Electric absolutely nailed it on these bikes. All right, so taking a quick break here on my bike ride, I wanted to talk about some of the awesome features that come on the Expedition 2.0. This particular one comes in two different colors. You can get it in this blue or you can get it in a white color, which is what Ben's been riding. And I think this is absolutely awesome. The person who designed this bike said that this is the first full length cargo bike that they've actually made. This one can hold a massive 35 amp hours of battery. That's what I'm riding right here. Let me get a close up of this. So this has 35 amp hours of battery life on it. Look at these massive batteries. This is gonna get you an acclaimed over 220 miles of pedal assist. And throttle alone, they're saying it'll get you over 100. Now you're probably not actually gonna be really using this to truly ride 
say 150 miles on one ride or 200 miles on one ride, but it's gonna allow you to make trips and not have to worry about bringing the charger along with you, which is a huge benefit. So looking at the back here, you do get this awesome cage design and it's actually specifically designed to carry four sets of pannier bags and they'll sell these on their website. So you can attach a pannier bag here and here and then the bottom of the pannier bag clips down here and down here. So these tubes were specifically designed for pannier bag, carry 400 pounds of capacity on this bike. And on the back here, you can carry well over 200 pounds. So you can carry a lot of weight on this. Looking down here, you do have peg spots for the footholds that you can purchase for this. So if you have kids that you're wanting to actually take on this, you can carry two small children on it. And they've got a brand new system that uh, they designed specifically for this that has better handholds and better padding for your kids, which is really nice. This does have a freewheel on the back. It's not a cassette. I do wish that this was a cassette instead of a freewheel because it would give you more options to upgrade in the future, but at least it's an eight speed. So you are going to be getting a lot of gears and it's an 11 tooth at the very bottom. And then you get a massive 52 tooth chain ring right there with a chain tensioner. This is the first electric bike that I've been on. And I can tell you from seeing the older versions in person, this is a huge upgrade. And the price comes in at a starting price of $13.99. And you can get this massive dual battery one for under $2,000. Really, really crazy. So if you're concerned at all about rider height, don't worry about it. It's got a dual seat post right here. So you've got actually a way to raise it from here. And then this portion actually raises up right there, just like that. Kind of hard to do one-handed, but that's how that raises up and it locks into place. So even if you're a super tall rider or if you're a shorter rider, you can slam it all the way down and still be able to ride this bike. And another thing is, is that the motor sound on this, it's not even that loud. The owner of the company, Levi, was actually saying that these motors were designed to be even quieter than past models. And I haven't ever ridden their past models, but I do believe that they have to be quite a bit quieter because you can barely hear them whenever you're going down the road. Now, as far as the rest of the drivetrain, you do get an Altus rear derailleur that's gonna shift through all of your eight speeds. And then up front, you do get that eight speed shifter right there. Now this does come with 20 inch by 2.5 inch wide Cho Yang tires. This fork is brand new to the Expedition. Before this was a complete hardtail with a rigid fork, but now on this new one, they did input a brand new dual spring fork, which is really nice because it can handle the extra weight of a cargo bike. And it does have a dual preload. So on each side over here, you're gonna get a preload that you can adjust to get the exact ride that you want out of this uh, fork. And it does have a through axle and that through axle does have a quick release, so it's completely toolless. One of the big upgrades that they had is this kickstand. This is a new kickstand that's supposed to be extra sturdy. It's taken a little bit to learn how to really use it, but I do think that this is gonna be a big, big upgrade. And then electric has these removable pedals, which are unique to them. I've never actually used them, but that's how they pop out. So you can take these in with you if you're going into the store or whatever, and somebody can't just pedal away with your bike. As I said earlier in this video, this is my very first experience with electric branded e-bikes. And overall, I was very surprised at the quality. They should be selling for a lot more. This was a very solid bike that is extremely capable. And some of the upgrades that they did with this 2.0 version are actually kind of mind blowing at the price point they come in at. The fact that you can get this bike starting around $1,400 and then going only up to $2,000 for a massive 35 amp hour battery setup is kind of unreal. There are so many other features that I didn't hit on during this video that you're definitely gonna wanna jump over to the electric website and check this out. If you guys have been in the market at all for an e-cargo bike, I would highly recommend Electric's Expedition 2.0. In fact, I'm gonna label this my number one cargo bike pick for 2024, and I'm gonna be surprised if anybody can beat it in 2025. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. It's completely free. 
And also hit that like button, it helps me out in the algorithm. And if you guys wanna pick up an Expedition 2.0 or any other electric bike, I would really appreciate it if you used my links below. That lets electric know that you're coming from my video and it does help out this channel at no additional cost to you. And of course, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think of this bike compared to other e-cargo bikes. All right, guys, get out there and ride your bike.